ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. Boris Johnson is unveiling his plans to scrap all remaining COVID legal restrictions in England, including the requirement to isolate. So does this mean the return of normality at last? Well, getting his living with COVID plans over the line is proving to be tricky for the PM. Experts have been urging the government to be cautious and Labour question the plans to reduce testing. Mr Johnson's meeting with the Cabinet ahead of updating MPs in the Commons was delayed earlier. Reports have since emerged it was because of issues that needed ironing out. Nicholas Cecil is our political editor and is at Westminster. So Nicholas, how is England and indeed London going to have to live with COVID then? So, well, we're still waiting for many of the details of this living with COVID plan. The cabinet was supposed to be meeting this morning to finalise all the details, but um, cabinet ministers turned up at number 10 this morning. Some, I think, are probably logged on via Zoom or Teams, only to discover that there was no meeting, which is really almost unprecedented. What we think has happened is that there was a last minute row between the Treasury and the Department of Health over testing about funding for ongoing testing. And so that is delayed everything. So Boris Johnson must have been knocking heads together this morning to try and get a resolution to this disagreement so he can actually unveil his plan this afternoon. What's the reaction been like behind the scenes at Westminster with these plans? Well, certainly Labour have raised some doubts about whether the government is actually following the scientific advice with this plan. Some Labour MPs suspect that this is been brought forward basically to try to shift the headlines away from the Partygate scandal and onto COVID and getting rid of COVID restrictions and measures and so on. Many Troy MPs are very keen to get rid of the final regulations and try to get back to life as normal as possible. So certainly we're streeting this morning. He's the um, shadow health secretary. He was suggesting that kind of this is an approach basically where ignorance is bliss. So if you get rid of testing, then you don't know how many cases you've got. Therefore, there's not really a problem as far as you can see. The end of free testing is one of the more contentious issues being discussed. Why is this proving to be so difficult to agree on? Well, this is probably the most controversial area, or one of the most controversial areas. Certainly, if you don't test, then you don't know whether you've got the disease. At the moment, there's large-scale testing going on in the country, but this is costing some £2 billion a month. The government is arguing that that money could be better spent on other health priorities, such as dealing with cancer treatments, dealing with the NHS backlog of of appointments and other treatments. So there's a strong case there. But equally, if you don't know if you've got COVID, how do you know to stay away from elderly relatives and other vulnerable people? The other controversial area is the ending of the self-isolation regulation. So at the moment, if you've got COVID, you are legally required to self-isolate at home rather than go, go around mixing. This is due to go, and then it will be down to individuals and their employers, for example, whether they go to work with COVID. Now, the suspicion is some unscrupulous employers may tell the staff, well, you're not that ill, come in and just kind of try and be sensible. But obviously, some people think that system is not sufficiently robust to to protect public health. Do you think this is finally the return to normality? It's certainly a a return to even closer to normality. I think the passenger locator form would still remain, and and there'll be some duties on, on local authorities as well. And the other thing I think to bear in mind is that as we come out of the winter, enter the spring and the summer, then the disease finds it more difficult to spread. And so I think naturally people will become a bit less um, concerned about catching and spreading COVID. So I think gradually in coming weeks and months, people will become freer and freer about how they respond to, to COVID. What's the opinion like about these plans amongst the Conservatives? Will this help Boris Johnson get back into the good books of his party? Yes, it certainly will. Amongst uh, certainly a there's a, a group of Tory MPs who think that a lot of these regulations have lasted far too long, and many of them should never have been imposed in the first place. Now that they will be delighted that these measures are finally going, there'll be some other Tory MPs, certainly some of the more experienced ones. I think will be asking whether this is really the right time to be doing this, or whether we should be waiting maybe a few more weeks or months. But certainly, there's what one one of our leading experts in vaccines, Professor. Professor Andrew Pollard from Oxford University, he was stressing that if you look over the the long term, the big picture, whether these measures go now, a couple of weeks or even a month or so, it probably doesn't make too much difference to the long term impact of of the disease. 
And how crucial is it for Boris Johnson to get this decision right? Well, it's, it's crucial that he's faced quite a lot of criticism over his handling of the COVID pandemic, especially the early phase of it and whether he was too slow to lock down. These measures now are are less crucial than those earlier decisions because Omicron is a, a less harmful variant than some of the earlier variants. It does spread more quickly, but it is leading to fewer hospitalizations. So in terms of when we look back at this crisis and if mistakes were made, it, it looks very much they would have been made during the first and second wave rather than the end of the pandemic, if this is the end of the pandemic. So the government's hope is that we are now moving from a pandemic situation into the disease becoming endemic. For example, like flu, where vulnerable people will need a annual booster to, uh, to get them through the winter, probably. But that for the vast majority of the population, we, we will not need more vaccination on this. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm. <laughs>